Hello and welcome to our second video with what's on the cutting table with K&K Logo Designs. I am Jessie and I will be doing today's demonstration of our very cute snack mats or place mats as you want to call them. I call them snack mats because they're a lot more fun to say. So today I am using my own material and I got this material on the All Iowa Shop Hop last year and my mom gave me the suggestion to do the snack mats and this is what it's gonna end up looking like. Now you can do, make the snack mats with any sort of the material that has the squares in. I chose to do my beer material and it makes a super simple place mat. We have a couple other ones you can do these snack mats with too. This material with the red truck here would be super cute for any Christmas placemats. And you can get more than one of these panels and then you can have 12 snack mats made out of that. So there's one idea. If you have any of the grandkids and want to do kind of a fun snack mat or placemat for them at the kids table, and you can wash these, so again, it's kid friendly. Um, if they get food on them, you can wash them. You could do the puppies for their snack mats, and there is eight of them on this panel. So you can get eight matching snack mats. Or coordinating snack mats, I guess. And then the third one I have to show you guys today is the sheltering snowman and again you can get two of these panels so you can get 12 snack mats out of him and he'll make a really cute Christmas placemat for you so today I am using my beer material I got on at the all Iowa shop hop last year um, I got this beer material and then I also got my tossed beer words and then from our fabric collection here at the shop I am using the Benertex wool tweed it looks like wool but it is 100% cotton it's really really soft fabric 100% um, cotton but super super nice to work with and again it's the Benertex wool tweed and I'm using honey, cinnamon, orange, gold, and the black. So I'm using it as my outer border here, right here on my placemat. And then I'm also using it for the back. So it's gonna be my back as well. So we're gonna get started. First things first, we're gonna take our square and make sure they're all squared up. Mine ended up being 10 and a half by 11 and a quarter, my squares. And then I took, I'm in my middle strip here, four and a half inches. So it'll end up being four inches wide in the end. And we are going to sew them right sides together. You want to make sure your words are going the right direction. I've had to rip a couple out because my words were upside down. So, now, after you get that sewn, I did make my four and a half inch strips of my beer words a little bit longer just to make sure I had room. I made them 11 and a half inches long. Um, so I am going to trim the excess off. So I trimmed my excess off and I had it ironed, trimmed, and now I'm ready to start putting on my border. 
So I'm going to take, what I ended up doing was just taking three one and a half strips by the width of fabric. And I've been cutting them as I go so I don't have to waste any of my border fabric. So I'll show you kind of what I mean by that. I started by sewing on one side. So I sewed on my one side of a border and then you see how I have all this fabric here. What's gonna happen is I'm gonna iron my seam and then I'm gonna cut and then move this fabric to my other side and then I will iron that seam, cut off the excess and I'll have enough to do the bottom and then I'll have to get a new strip to do my top. Once you get your seam ironed down, of course to the dark side, we are going to cut off the rest of that strip. So we're going to even it up, do it on my cutting table, and we're going to cut right there. So now we have the right length and an extra piece of fabric that we're going to take and we are just going to line it up to the other side. you get that strip sewn again you're gonna have your border on this side and you're gonna have this excess material so we're going to iron it to the dark side and then we're gonna cut this material off so once you get your seam ironed we are going to cut off that excess fabric again So then I'm going to sew this strip to the bottom of my snack mat and I will have enough to make it to my bottom with a little bit of excess, but then I'll need that second strip to start going around on the top. So I'll kind of show you what that looks like as well. So once we get that, we're going to iron this again. And after we have it ironed. We are gonna cut off this little tail we have. There we go. So we have three of our four sides done and we're gonna take our next strip and we'll line it up and then we'll sew that top strip on. You'll iron it again and then you will cut off the tail you have here. So then once you do that, we will get a snack mat with our border around it. So that is how it'll end up. Now I did a one and a half inch border for my color here um, because we'll lose a quarter of an inch on each side so it'll end up being a one inch border all the way around. So I have the one and a half inch strips. Now when I did my one and a half inch strips, I got three one and a half inch strips for two of my blocks. And I have my blocks coordinate, so I have eight total blocks, so two blocks will get the same border. So that's why I did three one and a half inch strips, one and a half inch by the width of fabric. And that way I could get my block, both blocks covered with that coordinating color. So after our block top is finished, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put batting on the inside and we are going to take our back, our Benertex 
wool tweed black is gonna be the back. So I'll kind of show you what that's gonna look like. is put together what we're gonna do is I have warm and natural as my batting I'm gonna put in between my front and my back and so I just cut a piece of warm and natural what I did was I laid my warm and natural out um, and put my square on top of it and just cut around to get me a nice piece that'll fit in between and initially, on this one, I'll show you at the end of the video, I made my back a half inch bigger. And then I'm going to show you how we're going to do the binding on it. But I made it a half inch bigger. And then what I did was I folded once and twice and then sewed along the edge. Now, on this first one, again, I'll show you towards the end of the video. I'll zoom into it and you can see it's very thin and not the straightest line. A half inch was not enough. So this piece I made an inch around, an inch bigger than my top. So that way I can fold a quarter inch or I can fold a half inch and then fold again. And I'm working with enough fabric that I don't feel like my fingers are gonna get cut off so it was very stressful working with the first one when I only had about a half inch around the outside so you can cut it however big you want it um, whatever you think you can work with that's how I would cut it so I made mine bigger on this one because I knew I was getting frustrated on the first one so the second one I cut it and I think I have a half or I have about an inch on each side and then I think I have an inch for the top and the bottom. Now it's, I'm probably gonna regret it. It's probably gonna be too thick, but what I'm gonna do is fold it. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that. So first we're gonna pin all three of these together and I'm gonna start sewing on my machine from the middle out so we don't get any bubbles. I'm gonna stitch in the ditch over here and then I'm going to stitch in the middle of my black around my mug. Um, on this one I'll be stitching around the beer mug here and then I'll show you kind of how we did that binding. So we're going to start pinning them together. I have quite a few pins in mind and I'm going to tell you why. When you put a lot of these pins in, we're trying to keep this together and keep it kind of tight. So that's why I'm also going to suggest starting from the middle and working your way out because that's going to prevent any bubbles coming on the back. So I am going to go around my mug, but first I'm going to just do a box around a couple of my words. Um, just to kind of tack it down and it'll be a little bit more secure than just going around the mug here. So I think I'm just gonna go around the word drink, around the word beer, and around the word good. So that'll be every other word. And then I'll do my beer mug um, and then I'll do my outer, this black edge around here. And then I'm gonna stitch in the ditch because I am using black thread and a black bobbin. Um, my black thread coming on that white, so I'm gonna stitch in the ditch on this white. So as you can see, you don't really see my stitches, but it's making it secure on that side. So, here we go. I just stitched around the word beer. I just poked myself. Um, so that's in the middle of my square. So I just stitched around that word, um, and then I'm gonna stitch around 
good next and then I'm gonna come up and do drink and then I'm gonna do the mug um, now I'm gonna show you how I kind of keep that line going straight instead of being frustrated with curved edges again I'm just boxing it so I'm gonna put my presser foot down I'm gonna put my needle down to start and this machine will keep the needle down it puts the needle back to where you started so what I mean by that is I start with my presser foot down. When I end my last stitch, my needle will still be in my fabric. So I'll kind of show you. So I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna stop. My needle is still down, but I'm gonna pull my fr presser foot up and I'm just gonna turn my fabric. And then I'm gonna put my presser foot back down and my needle's still in my fabric. And now I'm just going a different direction I don't have to worry about lining it up, making sure I'm still on the right line. And again, we're gonna do it when we come to this point. We'll stop, press your foot up, my needle's still down. Press your foot back down. And then one last time, press your foot up, the needle's still down. Just a pin. Um, and again, press your foot down and we'll finish off our last square. And again, when you are doing this, I'm not saying your lines have to be perfect because it's a little bit harder when you're using the sewing machine to do your hand, um, putting them together, your hand quilting here. So, ouch, these pins are just gonna keep sticking me. Okay. So here I went around good, and then I'll show you what the back kind of looks like. You may not be able to see it, but I'll show you at the end. So I just have two squares around the words. So now I'm gonna go around drink, and I'm gonna go around my mug, and then do my square, stitch of the ditch, and then I'll do the binding and show you how I do that. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of show you what I did here. So as you can see, I came right here on the outside and I came around my word every other word and then I did my stitching on the black around the outside and then over on the white I did stitch in the ditch up here down this side and right here I didn't do this side because I already have that middle stitch there so now we're going to try the binding. Okay, so for the binding, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna press this down to create almost a seam, and you can even do it with your thumbnail um, in a just, little bit, and we're gonna start here, and we're gonna sew right along this edge all the way down, and then when I do a corner, I will show you the corner and then you can do it all the way around and that'll get you that nice binding look without having to hand stitch the binding, which is perfect, just what we want. Sewed all the way, made my stitch come all the way to the end and what I'm gonna do next is show you how um, I'm gonna kinda throw the corner in there. So I'm gonna turn it and since I'm turning, folding this side twice, I'm gonna fold. And this is just gonna work my corner. And so I'm gonna do my half a fold and then a full fold. And I've got a nice little corner made. So that's how you can do it, or you can uh, work your corner in however you want. Um, sometimes it's trial and error to figure out how to work the corners in. So you sew all the way around, work your corners in, you get your final place mat or final snack mat and you can just keep repeating until you have your whole set. Again, I had used um, my All Iowa Shop Hop fabric that I got last year, finally found a project for it and I used the Benertex Wool Tweed colors for my border and for my back. Um, it's 100% cotton fabric, looks like a wool, it's really cute. And I used the Honey 
the cinnamon, the orange, the gold, and then the back. I use the black. In the comments, I will be putting a link to our website or in the description, I'll put a link to our website so you can check out that uh, Better Text wool tweed on our website. And then I'll also be putting how much fabric I used and what I cut and everything like that also in the description. So if you wanna give it a try, that is what is on the cutting table at K&K Logo Designs this week.